acorn I picked up on Yom Kippur Day of Atonement. Um, it had a little, little yarmulke on it. <laughs> and uh, usually those things fall off, but it looked so appealing. And uh, the mystical lady who is thought of at the end of this, um, this poem, a very famous story which physicists seem to admire tremendously. It's in her uh, what it, Revelations of Divine Love. Her name is Juliana or Julian of Norwich. Acorn Yom Kippur. Look at this little fallen thing. It's got its yarmulke still on and a jaunty sprig of a twig, a feather in its cap. And in its head there is a single-minded thought white oak. Language and thought have changed since I was young, and we used to say it had an oak inside. The way some tribes believe that every man has a homunculus inside his head. Already, though, matter was going out and energy coming in, though energy wasn't the last word either. The last word is information, or more tersely, the word. Inside its dreaming head, the acorn has complete instructions for making an oak out of the sun and the local water and soil, not to forget the great stretches of time required for cracking the code, solving the script, translating the sacred book of the white oak with its thousands of annual leaves and their footnotes amounting to millions in a century, instructing the oak in the making of acorns and so forth and so on, world without end. What the moral of this may be, I do not know. But once a mystical lady in a dream beheld her savior, an acorn in his hand, and asking, what might this be, was answered thus, it is in a manner everything that is made.